will recall Newton's first law that says an object at rest, like this skateboarder, will remain at rest until an outside force is applied to the object. So we're going to apply an outside force and you'll see he'll begin moving. Newton's first law also says that once he starts moving, he will continue to move in a straight line as long as there is no outside force acting on him. So an object in motion stays in motion in a straight line until acted upon by an outside force. If the force is in the same direction as he's moving, it will make him gain speed. If the force is in the opposite way that he's moving, it will slow him down. And if the force is perpendicular to his motion, it will change his direction. This time we're going to build a track which is going to confine the man's motion. So we'll start him in motion and he'll stay in a straight line until he hits the track. Then you'll notice that the forces from the track will change his direction and that once those forces are removed, that is the track ends, he will continue moving in a straight line motion. So as we saw, objects tend to want to move in a straight line. So if you have an object that's moving in a circular path, like the earth going around the sun, it's because there's a force acting on the object. That force is pointed toward the center of the circle, and in this case it's the force of gravity between the earth and the sun. At all moments the earth is moving in a direction tangent to the circle, as you can see from this velocity vector. And if somehow the force between the Earth and the Sun were removed, the Earth would travel off in a straight line. So in this sim, I'm going to turn off gravity, and you'll notice that the Earth moves off in a straight line, tangent to the original circle. Okay, so to summarize, objects want to move in a straight line. If the object is moving in a circle, there must be a force on the object, and that force points toward the center of the circle. In terms of the mathematics of circular motion, you'll see there are three main formulas you need to know. The first says the speed of the object moving in a circle is equal to the number of revolutions times the circumference divided by time. You'll recognize the top is just the distance traveled divided by time, which is our normal formula for speed. The second formula lets you figure out the acceleration of the object. Again, the acceleration is not because of a change in speed, but because of a change in direction. The acceleration points toward the center of the circle, and hence we use the subscript C. And that is equal to the velocity of the object squared divided by the radius of the circle that it's moving in. The final formula is for the amount of force necessary to keep it in circular motion at a given speed and a given uh, radius. The formula says the net force is equal to the mass of the object times the speed of the object squared divided by the radius of the circle that it's traveling in.